Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, today I want to tell you about Open Dragon, our free software for education and the environment. Let me say a few words first about remote sensing. Most of you are familiar, I'm sure, with satellite images from Google Maps or from television, but remotely sensed imagery is much more than just a pretty picture. Information that's acquired from remotely sensed images is now used routinely for environmental monitoring, as well as for dealing with global crises, such as flooding, various disasters. Remote sensing over the past decade has enjoyed explosive growth. As you can see from this slide, the number of satellites and the amount of data is increasing. And more importantly, for our point, uh, there are many more users, many of whom do not have a lot of technical background or training. These non-expert users need simple, inexpensive analysis tools. Open Dragon meets that need. Open Dragon is a desktop remote sensing and GIS package that is easy to use, that is, provides comprehensive functionality, that's available in multiple languages, including Thai, Indonesian, and traditional Chinese, and that is extensible by use of our programmer's toolkit. And Open Dragon is free for download. Open Dragon can be used for education starting at the high school level and moving to graduate and undergraduate education, both in computer-related topics and in subjects where earth science and environment is important. Open Dragon is also extremely useful for research projects. These are a couple of graduate projects that our students have done using it. The Programmer's Toolkit allows researchers to create their own analysis routines and then integrate them with the desktop package. To make Open Dragon more useful, we've written an introductory textbook with hands-on exercises that's available from Amazon. We maintain a website where people can get the software as well as sample imagery and, of course, a Facebook page. We want Open Dragon to have a sustainable future. We want it to live and to grow. And we believe that just having the software be free is not enough. We believe that Open Dragon needs to be open source. However, developing and maintaining free and open source software is not by itself free. You may not be aware, but most of the important and influential open source projects are actually funded by large corporations, such as IBM and Google. If you can help us, please get in touch. Thank you. Uh, great project. I've done a, uh, a project called uh, Invisible Cities. Uh, it is using the uh, algorithm that, uh, to crawl the keywords on Twitter and um, Facebook feeds that to connect people using the same uh, hashtag to mm -hmm. and embed it with uh, uh, Google Earth and we, we launched in New York City. And that, that app has now been adapted by the uh, uh, mayor's office to monitoring the uh, fire outbreaks and disaster outbreak. Um, so I personally just love how you're doing. Uh, my, my question would be, um, um, who are on your team? Is your team um, uh, fully equipped with the knowledge needed to, to make this happen? Right now, the team is just the two of us. This has been kind of a hobby of my partner, Kurt Rudol, and I for a number of years. Um, we have a lot of expertise, um, and we also have a lot of experience living and working in Asia. Um, and as I say here, but it's really true, we're, we're passionate about using computer technology for social good. And you may or may not have noticed the organization that's listed on the title slide of this is called the Global Software Institute. Yeah. That is a nonprofit organization based in the United States, and they are the sort of sponsors or owners of Open Dragon. Yeah. So one of the things we need the money for is to get more people working on this software. Yeah. Um, you might think that open source just means take the source and put it out there on the internet. Anybody can download it. Well, it doesn't work that way. You need documentation. You need to be able to. Um, guide the community, you need 
uh, version control systems that everyone can access. You need a lot of infrastructure and you need people. You need good programmers and we want to build a community not just in Asia but around the world. So right now, we're not enough. That's exactly why we're seeking crowdfunding. Have you heard of uh, ASRI, A, uh, A-S-R-I, E-S-R-I? Oh, Esri. Yes. Oh, yes. Everyone in this field knows Esri. Right. Esri is the leading GIS provider. So um, I'm, uh, I'm friends with uh, Jack Dangerman, the founder of Esri. I've met so, Jack Dangerman, Okay, yeah. I can connect you with uh, their, their, some of the initiatives that are funding this type of software. I think they would be happy to speak to you. It's possible. It's possible. When you're dealing with a commercial company, though, who might view your software as being a competitor, there's a little bit of a problem. Uh, but certainly, if you have you know, contacts with Jack, I, I've met him and shaken his hand, but he probably has no idea who I am. We've been doing this for a long time. Anyone else? How much are you looking to raise? Oh, um, 100,000 US. And that should cover a period of about three years. And by that time, we would hope that it would be a self-sustaining open source project. Uh, that money would go partially for compensation for people to work on some of the conversion. It would go for travel to go to conferences. There are some major free and open source conferences related to geospatial software. There was a big one in Germany in June, but we didn't have the money to go um, for computer infrastructure and so on. We've been funding this project out of our own pockets basically for a long time. And we just, you know, it's not going to get any bigger and any better unless we get some more support. We could, we could use less than 100,000, but we're looking for 100,000. How would it become self-sustaining after the, the 100,000? Well, it's a good question. I mean, once you have a set of dedicated developers, hopefully what you find is that mostly they're going to be software developers. They're going to be working for companies, and they're going to go to their companies and say, look, I'm working on this really useful open source project. You know, can I do it on company time? So the, the money is mostly needed for the conversion process. Most open source projects um, are supported ultimately by the employers of their developers. So we're hoping that that would happen with Open Dragon once we can get enough people who, and we don't need a lot of people. I mean, we need a core development group of maybe half a dozen people around the world. Plus, we need users, we need we need to publicize it. We need to build a community more than, more than we've done so far, far, more than we've been able to. I mean, we both have day jobs. So it's kind of difficult for us to put the time and the effort into this that it really needs to reach critical mass. Thank you very much. Thank you.